Are you hiding in a fantasy of the hustle? And are you protecting yourself from failure? We have some solutions for that when we come right back. Hello and welcome to Music Industry Cities. New Thoughts, where we discuss fresh ideas and take a look at the industry from a different perspective. I'm Peter Schwing, and joining us always, Stephanie Carlin. If there's something you'd like to chime in about, let us hear your thoughts in the chat or leave a comment below. And uh, stick around at the end. Like sometimes what we like to do is uh, after we roll the credits, uh, you know, we might just magically reappear and just uh, hang out. So uh, anyway, uh, let's get right into this. There's a really cool discussion here. What's up, Steel? I see you just jumped in the chat there with the good word. All right. So Stephanie, we're going to bring Stephanie right on up here. Uh, how you doing? I am doing <laughs> so good today. Isn't that a great thing? Oh, my God. Uh, it's January 14th. We're halfway through January. Can you like wrap your mind around that, Peter? Because uh, I've been having trouble today. Yeah, yeah. So he, here, here's the thing. Two, 2021 came out like gangbusters. It came out like on steroids, fired up. I, I already feel like I, I feel like I've gone six rounds with 2021. I feel like it should be June already. I'm kind of like <laughs> like there's a lot that has happened. Yeah, I'm trying to give up what I know about time. That's the only <laughs> way I can experience any freedom with the confusion of it being like six months. Yet, like, I can't believe it's almost February. We're halfway to February. I know. And, and real, then real mind fuckery. Right. And then February is the short month. So that's just going to skip by. Next thing you know, it's going to be like summer and we're going to be like, hey, am I allowed to go to the beach? <laughs> Well, we're going to have a lot more new thoughts by then. We're going to have like <laughs> like 30 more sessions until right. we have to talk about that. Oh, wow. And we're going to be coming. And like yeah. before we know it, we'll be on our one year anniversary, which neither of us could figure out. So before before we started, we were like chatting in the green room. It's we were like, hey, it's almost like our one. We've been doing this almost a year. I'm like, has it been? We're like, well, wait, was it from February, April? Like time is just an illusion. We have no idea. <laughs> Well, we started this right when quarantine hit in the U.S., mm -hmm. right when COVID hit. I remember being at my quarantine location, being on the phone with you. You were telling me about this amazing vision you had. So it's like this benchmarker for me of how long has has this new world been a reality. I know. Uh, you know, Mark, I think it's March 13th is like the kind of the official one year anniversary of uh, everything closing down. Yeah. And yep. I remember that because my podcast, I was supposed to be at the Brooklyn Public Library. I was uh, uh, invited uh, to be one of like eight exhibitors. Uh, it was called about like showcasing their podcast. It was this, uh, you know, a wonderful uh, award in a sense that uh, you get. Well, I got to show I was going to showcase and I was like everything. And like so they were talking about like, well, we're not sure what's going on. And then just a few days before they're like, yeah, we have to cancel this. I'm like, ah, oh. and then it was like the world shut down that weekend. So I remember it very well. <laughs> so yeah, me uh, too. Right. Well, you know, so you, you talk about sessions, talk about it's like and, you know, the the idea that I had about this and, you know, as artists, you know, musicians, uh, you know, I, I come from you know the background of being a musician. It's like we kind of like to live in our head and, uh, you know, we like to really dream big. Uh, and, you know, the problem is like that follow through and the fact that, you know, I, I told you about my vision and it's almost a year later and we're following through with this. I'm so happy you're part of this, uh, this journey, but it's, you know, from an artist standpoint is like, why do many not, why do you feel many do not really get, you know, follow through, you know, it's like, they're always hustling or talking about the hustle. Well, it's one of my favorite things about working with you, Peter, and like doing this show together is like, I see how you have a vision and how you methodically follow the steps to follow through. And it's taken a hot minute, right? Like here we are a year <laughs> later, having working together almost a year. Yeah. And like, look how sexy this setup is. We're like, we like look hot mm -hmm. on yeah. here. And this was all your blood, sweat and tears and your vision being executed for really creating like a premier place for people to understand what's happening in the music industry. Yeah, and, and I think you and I, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, and I, no, thank you for that. And it's something that, especially for artists that, and you hear the story of 
like the, and we talked about Ayesha, we talked about it on Monday kickoff. And again, it's like the work that you don't see done when we've talked a little about this, it's like the iceberg where people might not see all the accomplishments that you're that to get to that point and all that hard work. It's like climbing that wall. It's like building the staircase. And I'm like, it's tough. And I look back, we look back one year ago when we have the one year anniversary, we're going to look back and look what the video looked like. And we're going to see it was probably like some really cheap zoom thing. I probably didn't even have a background or if I did, it was that bad green screen look or it was something terrible. And, and something with artists is like, many times they look at and compare to seeing what other artists are doing and like, oh, here's my social, you know, here's another artist and look at their, you know, Instagram likes or their YouTube video views. And we were actually talking about that. And it's like, well, I got to hustle. I, but, but like they dream and then they get caught up in comparisons and that crushes their dream in a sense. Yeah. Can I rant a little bit about this? Because I have oh. a lot of different thoughts. Okay, there's like I never th I thought you never ask. All right, I'll give you the screen. <laughs> I never ask to rant. Do you even know me, Peter? There's nothing more satisfying than having a vision in your mind and seeing it through to completion in reality. There's nothing more satisfying because great artists like you watching, you have visions that impact a lot of people. They elevate a lot of people. They inspire a lot of people. So when you arrive at the completion of one of your beautiful visions, I mean, that's it. It's, it's like a dream. But there's a couple things that can go wrong. And I want to think about two today. You either, A, you don't have a big enough vision for yourself, and I'll explain what I mean. Or B, you're one of these sickos that refuses to relish in, bask in, appreciate your own accomplishments. So I wanted to talk about that first, because we as human beings are addicted to diminishing ourselves. We get off on making ourselves small. And it's not your fault because everything around you in this world is designed to have you doubt yourself. It's designed to keep you in a total state of wanting and yearning so that you buy and strive and stay in debt and want more, not from lack. I mean, from lack, not from dreaming, which is where we really should be striving from. But when you appreciate, when you refuse to bask in and appreciate your own accomplishments, you diminish your power. You say energetically, vibrationally, no, I'm not that worth that praising that much. I'm not worth being seen in an, even a nice light. Are you one of these artists who finds it really hard to bask in your accomplishments? Do you go to bed every night appreciating yourself? Because I worry about the time you and great artists spend being frustrated with yourself. How would you speak to your son? your daughter, your little nephew, your niece, when they're frustrated, you wouldn't say, well, if you'd gotten more streams, you would have gotten more coverage and the release would have been picked up by Pitchfork by now. No, you'd probably say something nourishing, encouraging, like every day you're getting stronger and stronger. I know you don't see it, but I see it. And I know you're frustrated now, but you're so powerful. Don't you see all the good work you've done? But we're not tender or gentle with ourselves. You're not in appreciation for what you can do. There's always a hypervigilance for what's missing, what's the lack. And we've been trained to think this way, which leads me to my second point, which is you might not have a big enough vision. Your vision might be too small for the truth of who you are. Because if you look around, the world appears to be on fire. But I think a deep knowing inside of you just knows, just knows we're waking up and we ask for this. And what's happening now in our world has been building and building for a really long time. You knew a time like this might come. You knew a tipping point might come. And participating in an awakening, that's what's happening now, isn't some hunky-dory feel-good lullaby. It fucking hurts to wake up. There's always a crisis involved in waking up. Always, always, always. So maybe your vision is too small. Because you and I know artists lead the awakening. You as the musician or a leader in the music industry, you lead the awakening because music is our society's closest connection to truth. It's how we can feel God or higher power. And while you're piddling around in the busy work of your hustle, 
getting ruffled and stopped and frustrated and thwarted by every tiny little no that floods your inbox, not now, all the ignored messages. Well, you're giving your power away and you're letting other people dictate who you are by accepting their no into your vision. So why does this relate to your vision being too small? Because in order to avoid being disappointed, we play it cool, we act like it's no big deal, and we commit ourselves to safe, easy games that we're not even really that interested in playing. And then, you know, surprise, we don't fulfill them. So basically, who gives a shit if people don't like your vision or if they say no to it? What's it going to be? What's it going to take to be a yes to failing? to welcome failing, to have a quota of how much can you fail inside your big vision. Because out in the world, people are going to make their lack of vision seem logical. They're going to use very dense language with convincing arguments, very academic as to why there's no hope and you should think so too. And I want your vision to meet them with this same conviction, to meet it in an energy that cannot it can only be felt, not thought through, like, but pierced in the heart. That's what we do as artists. You are the makers of hope, of peace, of love, forgiveness. And these things can only be felt and you can deliver them through your music. Because here's my punchline. There's no such thing as failure. There's always only one soul on the other side of the screen. One soul. While you're worrying about your streaming numbers, there's one soul listening on the other side of the stream. So. In conclusion, don't get drowned in your hustle, occupying yourself just to keep busy. Pull yourself up into your vision. Get serious. Learn how to maintain your vision. Eat clean food. Drink good water. Go to bed early. Meditate. Be in nature. Pray. Take care of yourself. Turn off your phone. Turn off the Wi-Fi. Turn off your email. Get connected to yourself. Start to feel good so that you can help others feel that's what you do best. It's what you do best when you're making your incredible, incredible art. That's what I got to say about that. Awesome. That was fire. That was, you, you are starting off 2021 like on fire. I, and I think it's just that the, it's the new energy of 2021. Like you know, I was saying that, you know, we came out, 2021 came out on fire. You are, you are on a roll. That was fantastic. I was like, got chills. Uh, Do, Dominique uh, was over on Facebook and he was like, he was like, wow, I was just talking uh, about this to somebody. And then he's like, that rude awakening might be too late to wake up. It's never too late to wake up. It's never too late, but we're mm -hmm. watching it in real time right now. And it looks like a goddamn disaster zone out there, <laughs> doesn't it? But what always comes next? Mm -hmm. The Renaissance, the healing, always in the history book. Yeah, exactly. And, and then all the change that comes out of it. So uh, one thing that you, you, when you're touching upon is like, you know, the likes, the views, the, this, and then like the, the people that like might knock that down a little bit or something. And, and so it's like the challenge is like you, you set these goals. Okay. You set, you, you're like, Hey, I wanted to get to this level of success. So it's like your followers. It's like, I got my first hundred followers. Okay. Hundreds that miles, that milestone. I, I, you know, it's just a good round number, I guess. Uh, I like, I'm like, Hey, I got 90. I'm like, that's cool. That, that was my goal. I want to get 90. You know, it's like, try different numbers. Don't try to like, maybe not hit like what everybody else is like. I have to do a hundred, a thousand, 10,000. It's like, how about like, I do like 97. What about, what about 237? You know, it's like, you actually kind of, kind of make it more fun in a sense. And you're setting a goal and that actually makes you focus more on that because it's not like psychologically, it's not a common value. Like one of those things they say, um, you know, they were saying it's like, um, they're like, oh, write down a number, a figure, a number that you want to make and it, write down like this random number. Don't say like, I want to make a hundred thousand dollars a year. Like say, I want to make a hundred and seven thousand dollars, three hundred and sixty two dollars and seventy five cents. And like, and what happens at those goals is like, if you ever say, tell your goals, like, Hey, uh, my goal was to hit 97 followers. This, you know, my, I started my Instagram from zero. I started my Facebook, my YouTube, my Twitch, my TikTok, whatever cool kid, the platform, the cool kids are on that particular week. Um, 
people have a tendency to say like, oh, I got a hundred. And it's, a lot of people will celebrate that. And then some will say, oh, okay, that's great. When do you, when do you plan on getting your next hundred or when do you get to your next thousand? And to people that like the people who say that don't understand how tough it is to get to that hundred. It's like you just ran a marathon to get to that hundred and you just want to take a breather and celebrate that. And you're like, I got to a hundred. I need to like break. I need to go out. I need to go hiking or something. I need to sleep. I need to do something. And then it's like, what's my next goal? But when people come in and start smacking you to say it's, it is, it is actually a smack with across the head and a two by four. It's like, Oh great. You got a hundred. What's your next goal? Well, it's, always going to be a human being's <laughs> innate thing to desire. We're always going to desire. And, but we're also like totally brainwashed and addicted to lack. Right. So mm -hmm. like, it's really, it really is like, um, I think it's a spiritual practice to actually be settled in that acknowledgement of your first 100 listeners, subscribers, fans, whatever it is, and repel the um, addiction to lack and looking at, well, what's next immediately. But, you know, I have talked a lot on this show about how I'm such a huge fan of Kevin Kelly's article, 1000 True Fans. And I just read, um, I don't know who wrote it, but it was someone made it even nichier. And it, it's up on my public Facebook wall. It's in, it's called 100 True Fans. And I'm like, yes, this is what I've been saying. And this is what I teach to all my clients. like what is with having numbers for numbers sake and having engagement for engagement's sake? I'm such a fan of highly engaged, small communities. And I think that's where the real magic happens. And I think as artists, our attention should be turned more and more to creating highly engaged, small communities. Because when you have 100 mm -hmm. true fans, who want an energetic exchange with you. And that might be a financial exchange, right? 100 true fans who want a financial exchange with mm -hmm. you. You have your career. Yeah. And, and, and the fact is, it's, once you get those 100 true fans, it actually, they're helping to amplify you. So that there was always that like, you know, crowdsourced and, uh, you know, amplify these, these uh, platforms years ago that were saying, and get you know get your fans to amplify you and do your marketing for it's really saying do your marketing and promotion promotions for you so they would like platforms like have your fans on here every time they click the share button they get monetized or you can reward them with things and i was like your reward it's like it's just like a that reward kind of it's like and they didn't they didn't fly because to ask your fan to say hey come on this platform and I'm not saying this, but I want you, you're in charge of marketing and promoting for me. If you have a hundred true fans, they're going to be talking about you and other people are going to actually find you. Cause your shit's going to be good. You. Right. Cause your shit's good and they love you. Yeah. It's so easy. It's, you don't have to be strategic or manipulative about it mm -hmm. when your shit's good and you have your core fan base. But yeah. you know, when you get into like quantifiable results, like, like you only need a hundred, well then the deeper stuff starts to come out about how like, you know, you say you want to be seen, mm -hmm. but actually you'll do anything possible to not be seen. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, just maybe, but that could be for another day, Peter. Yeah, we can talk exactly. about that next week. <laughs> exactly. So uh, yeah, we can, we can go on a whole bunch. Uh, yeah, and here, here's another thing uh, with communities. Uh, communities are tough. Communities are challenging. Getting those hundred people, you know, for instance, we have the Music Industry City Forum on Facebook. You know, the, the engagement is low. There, there's really no engagement in there. And for whatever reason, people just don't feel like talking about stuff in there. But I'm over in VR and I have a Discord server. Uh, we have a Music Industry City Discord server. Uh, if you go to musicindustrycity.com and you actually just register for free and then you'll get the emails and you get all that information of where you can find us. Uh, yeah, slip in that promo. Uh, but the thing is on the Discord server, I have conversations with all these people that I met in virtual reality where we do a, a music and VR networking event every Monday and like a hundred something people roll through complete. So I'm like, Hey, this community is great. They, these are the people that I wanted to be speaking with. And they're like, this is fantastic. We have the discord server going and it's much, it's, and it's a small, it's a small community, but 
you get to have a better conversation with this smaller community and it's growing and it just slowly grows and people spread the word. So they're like, we've become a true community there. Whereas opposed to Facebook, I mean, Facebook groups, we, we know what Facebook groups are. If like they end up kind of like devolving over time as growth because you have, it starts off with the best intentions with the, your, your colleagues, the people kind of on your level and you like are helping each other. And then it starts growing and you start letting people in. And then you always see is somehow it's somebody's going to get in. It's going to devolve. Arguments are going to start the fighting, the calling out the, you know, it's like once you start breaking into thousands of people, it's, it's harder to moderate, it's hard to control, and then you start getting the repeated questions. So now, while the people, the OGs have grown, and you're letting more people in, it's like, oh, they're asking the 101 questions that we already went through years ago. So now what do we do? Start our own group from scratch with a smaller crew, because that community well, has I've a been, better engagement. Yeah, and I, I've been loving seeing Music Industry City find its home on different mm -hmm. platforms and see the different ways that communities work or don't work. Mm -hmm. And I mean, personally, I have a small Facebook group of about 300 people and it's just like the most lit place. It's like yeah. my home. I love seeing the engagement in there. I love my people in there. And um, yeah, it works for that level of the community. Mm -hmm. um, I can't say that I've seen every Facebook group that hits into like 1k 5k 10k 20k devolve i've seen a lot of really beautiful ones but mm -hmm. it takes a lot of tending to like a garden that gets overgrown it becomes a, a full-time job it becomes a full-time job i mean i i've seen groups that are like some of the most wholesome amazing communities and then they go through those patches where it's like uh you know the the ogs kind of like yeah you know we already like we already asked that question or we already talked about that stop this so you have to then then as a moderator, you have to, because I'm also a moderator in another group, which it is 400 people and it's fire, okay? And we have amazing conversations and it's like kind of a hidden group in that sense that people are, if you look at the title, you're like, I'm not gonna wanna join that group, but it's a fire group. And, you know, that that's the thing. It's like, you know, I wasn't saying like every group, uh, but a lot of them you see over time and we've experienced it. So it's, and it's a full-time job. Uh, you know, Dominique over here on Facebook, he's like, yeah, he goes, uh, I like that small communities of focus. And that's what you do with your community. It's a hyper-focused community. It's kind of the way of the future, I think. I mean, the future mm -hmm. is now, but that's the way that communities are going to work. And so artists need to pay attention to that. I think right that's on. what I got to say about that. Cool. All right. Uh, are we going to leave that as your closing remarks, or do you want a uh, want a little outro there? Closing remarks. So that's it. <laughs> All no right. more. <laughs> All right. So we're going to wrap up. Uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, make sure to find us more. I'm going to hit this button over here, and that's going to be it for today. Thanks for joining the conversation, everybody out there. Thanks for chiming in. Um, we're going to be doing this every Thursday. So uh, make sure to check out musicindustrycity.com where you can sign up for free and you get to find all the shows. We have Monday Kickoff, Motivate and Create, Tuesday Talkies, business-centric show. New Thoughts, we're in virtual reality doing networking events. We're doing going bring back free form with a call-in show so we can have just open conversation. We're gonna be on Clubhouse. We, we, we're going to, we're going to start the clubhouse chats going. Uh, if you're not already in there, try to get that invite. It's only on iPhone for right now. Uh, and that's, uh, it's going to be fantastic. And like I said, we're talking about all these different platforms. So you will be able to find us and have those conversations. Thank you everybody for checking us out. And once again, thank you to my co-host, Stephanie Carlin, and we'll see you next time. Cheers. <laughs>